Um, now, because it sounds like there's amazing questions coming from the room and potential for a lot of discussion, so I think I might jump straight to them uh, to some of our tech zero members that we have here today. So we've got James Cannings from MSQ that you've heard from a little bit already, Ben Knight from Go Cardless, and Sally Scott from Metricus. Um, and I'll just invite them to give them their stories, their experience of being part of both Tech Zero and the UN Race to Zero, and how their businesses have kind of incorporated all of their commitments. So, James, did you want to kick us off? Yep. Um, thanks, Sophia. Um, yep. Hi, everyone. Uh, great to see you. It's lovely to listen to the discussion. Um, I'll keep this quite short because I think the questions from you guys are perhaps kind of more interesting. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm James, I'm the Chief Sustainability Officer at MSQ. We're a global digital marketing and technology group, about a thousand people, um, about half of that in the UK, but also based out of the US, China and Singapore. Um, I accidentally became an expert in environmental sustainability um, after I took my own business carbon negative back in 2018 which is really just an extension of what Sophia was talking about it just means we used a lot more avoidance offsetting because it's quite cheap um, than our emissions to be to be carbon negative um, which was a, a good first step um, we were then acquired by MSQ or my business was and we, we rolled out all of the processes that I developed for uh, measurement um, similar to, to Ben uh, with his calculator I, I developed my own the tools were are still not great they're getting better but um in 2018 they were particularly non-existent really for small businesses anyway um and so across msq we then set our reduction strategies in the short term but we also now have um what's called near-term science-based targets that's that 2030 halving of emissions and this year we will have a formal uh, net zero pledge for uh, 2040 with the sbti um we seen massive benefits at MSQ of behaving like this. I work directly with the board. This is a you know a very big initiative. Um, it's critical for attracting and retaining staff, not just because of the way we behave as an organization, which they really appreciate, um, but we have a wide range of staff schemes, um, electric vehicle lease hire schemes, electric bike lease hire schemes for the cities. We have renewable energy schemes for our staff to discount that. We have a staff offsetting and tree planting scheme that we contribute to um, with more getting added to um, all the time. Um, and then it has benefits with our clients. You know, more and more as we're working for larger and larger clients, they require us to have science-based targets in order to come and work for them because we're part of their scope three. Um, so it becomes difficult to, to, to get uh, work with large clients if you don't operate like this, more and more in the UK and certainly in the public sector at the moment. Um, you know, and but equally, as and I touched on digital footprints briefly, but, you know, also trying to look at our, proposition to our clients how can we position msq as global leaders in environmentally sustainable digital marketing um, now if all that sounds interesting and potentially overwhelming in terms of how you get started and sophia kind of gave you a you know whistle stop tour of lots of things one of the things that was very important to me was to open source everything that i do and maybe this is something we could share afterwards as well i developed and launched last year a course on the future learn e-learning platform very simple for smes called how to uh, measure reduce and offset your company carbon footprint it talks through all the definitions the terminology we step through some different measurement tools linked to others we learn about offsetting and permanent carbon capture etc etc and we've got um, over a thousand people enrolled on that course already and it's going down really well so that's a, a nice resource now i joined tech zero initially because i felt i might be able to help others and, and that was certainly the case and i think we're going to hear from sally it was great she she went on was one of the people who went on the course and that was great actually i made some connections and it helped me learn a lot i i met ben who's going to talk and he shared some of his data from his calculator which helped improve mine and that will go up on the course and improve that for everybody else and i also met some people from the carbon removal center and uh, i've started to learn more about permanent carbon capture um, which sophia talked about a little bit and we're going to be using permanent carbon capture 
that carbon removal for our scope one emissions this year we're going to front load that because it's a great thing to do it's a great thing to support um, those sorts of projects so um, yeah I definitely really valued that community and learned a lot um, I, I was asked to finish with sort of one tip where, where I could start and the, and the thing that springs to mind is that education piece you know educate yourself and, and your businesses on on these definitions what is scope one two and three what is the difference between carbon neutrality and net zero which requires you to understand the difference between offsetting and permanent carbon capture and then again as Sophia says even a very crude effort at measuring um, and there are some tools on my course or the tools that Ben's built to get you started really quickly if you're a small business you know, in, in just a few hours almost because it'll mean that you focus in the right area and you don't you know just focus on your electricity usage which is often just really five percent of your emissions it's it's you know it's really not a big deal so it's 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 education and uh and, and measurement uh and yeah that that was it for me I think I'll, I'll maybe pass over to to, to Ben, should we rattle through and then do questions at the end? Does that make sense? Uh, yep, yeah. we can go to Ben. Uh, or was it Sally? Sorry, have I, I hijacked <laughs> the order? <laughs> oh, it doesn't, it doesn't really matter at this point. Um, yeah, take it away, one of you, someone. <laughs> Off to you, Sally. Off, okay, off. okay, I'll go. And it follows on quite nicely from James's. Um, mm -hmm. And I'll just share, I'm just going to share a couple of slides. Um, if I can, let's see. If not, I'll just walk through. Okay, that one should be right. Can you see the slides now, or is that the text? The choice of Zoom, hey? <laughs> Here we go. Okay, nice. Remove that. Oh, slide show, then you can see. Okay, so I'll just give you a quick intro to, to metrics. Um, can everyone see that now? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, great. So just to give you a bit of background, so we're a fairly small company still um, scaling up pretty quickly. That's why I've put 30 to 40, because we're kind of growing um, week on week at the moment, um, which has its own challenges. Um, but we're basically a software that helps to make um, the built environment more sustainable, essentially. Um, but we're kind of pivoting more towards that off the back of this um, sustainability journey that we've been on, um, which is quite interesting because initially we are more focused on kind of intelligent workspace and not just much you guys know about that, but it's essentially making buildings, use, using data to make buildings more efficient. Um, and in terms of global presence. Um, we're UK-based London head office, but we have um, people working out of Spain and India, and we're moving over to the US this year. Um, so just to then move on to our sustainability journey um, so far, what's quite interesting for us and from what you guys have said in the room so far is around that kind of the balance between your company kind of having um, a positive impact, but then how do you measure your own internal impact as well? Um, so that's kind of the journey we've been on and part of the reason that we then um, joined Tech Zero because we are starting to get questions from our customers and from our partners who we work with about kind of what, what we were doing and how we were measuring our own impact. Um, and as a small company, we don't necessarily have the resource or the money to hire an external consultant. So, um, we thought if we joined Tech Zero, we'd heard that it was quite, um, and as you've heard from um, James, it's quite a community and there's resources available. Um, so yeah, we, we joined Tech Zero and decided to position um, Net Zero as, as more of a centerpiece of our company, as well as it kind of being part of our business strategy, start to look internally as well. Um, and off the back of that, as uh, for me, I'm my role isn't necessarily, um, I think the others are kind of a head of sustainability type role. My role is actually product and partner manager. Um, but we started this sustainability committee where we have people across different teams and we all work together to, um, and we've done that education piece that James talked about. 
um, and used used his course. So that's been an amazing resource for us because we were kind of looking online for different calculators. A lot of them you have to either pay for or you might need a consultant to do data analysis on. But James's is super accessible. So it's allowed us to then do the step three that you can see on here. So measuring our um, scope one, two and three emissions. Um, and because it's expense based, the calculator, we had to do kind of internal data collection that Sophia mentioned earlier. So we've kind of been working with our finance team and had to do some internal um, questionnaires to try and find out more about our um, workforce's kind of habits, um, both at home and traveling to and from the office. But we've now got to the point um, where we've been able to, yeah, carry out carry out that analysis on it and look at the hotspots and start to put together a strategy um, as part of our our first sustainability report. I think Sophia mentioned as well, Supercritical, who are also part of um, Tech Zero. So we've used their report as an example of where we'd like to get to. Um, for us, it's kind of an achievable target. We haven't got. Um, necessarily heaps of money to throw at this at the moment but we're trying to um as the guys have mentioned trying to make the first steps towards having a picture of what where are where the highest emissions are for us as a company and because we sell hardware and stuff there's been it's been a difficult it's been difficult but we've um got to the point where we're starting to yeah identify where we could be reducing and offsetting um i actually attended Ben's um, workshop as well. Um, that was the climate action workshop that gave us other tips for ways we could start to reduce the footprint of our um, our software as a platform. So how could we reduce the the footprint of our platform as well? Um, so yeah, we're start we're starting to get to the next stage of actually kind of taking action and setting ourselves targets, um, and then we'll begin to look at kind of the SBTIs that that James mentioned and and setting um, more more official targets. I guess once we've got this big picture um, for ourselves, um, that we'll be be able to report to our kind of board members and externally to customers. Um, and just I, I added on this sixth sixth point as kind of the added benefit because I think I mentioned I mentioned before that our platform kind of is is kind of sustainability focused, but it wasn't really before. And we're trying to throughout this journey, we've been able to kind of realize how actually we could be leveraging the data that we collect on our platform to help people reduce. Um, the energy consumption within their um, built environment. I think it was touched on in one of the first um, talks we had this morning around the built environment being such a massive player in, in carbon emissions. I think it's actually about 40% of global emissions are con uh, attributed to the built environment. So we're, as part of this kind of refocusing us internally as a business to look at ourselves, we're also looking at how we can then support other companies to reduce the the impact of their built environment so it's kind of been a there's been a couple of different benefits to um starting this journey that we wouldn't necessarily have thought of but yeah it's been it's been um very interesting a massive learning curve um and i think um in terms of kind of final um the final point and the final um piece of advice is yeah, the, and I think I've, I've said it before, Sophia, to you, just around the kind of getting started. And it can seem quite daunting. I think for us as sort of a startup size company with no committed resource, it was quite daunting, all the different language um, and the different terminology. But we've had um, the community as part of TechZero to help us keep learning and start to get us on our way. And we've got kind of that rough um, idea now. And, and as the the quote that we saw before we'll keep iterating on that um but yeah i think it's kind of just just the getting started can seem quite daunting daunting but um yeah it's been it's been good for us so yeah that's that's all from me thanks ali and i will just say as well that i've put together a whole list of resources that sammy will share afterwards and that would include james's uh, future learn course um, tech zero toolkit some other things that you can um, use that will help um, that all of these members have used so with that Ben over to you great stuff thank you thanks Sally and thanks James and good morning everyone uh, it's lovely to to join you all um, 
my uh, one year old's been up since five o'clock UK time, so I'm on about my fifth coffee already. So <laughs> I need to slow down a little bit, but I'm trying to going to try and do a, a technical thing and share my screen. So hopefully you can see some slides now. Fingers yeah, crossed. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, so I'm Ben. I'm head of sustainability here at Go Cardless. Just give you a very quick overview. So we are a, a global fintech, a, a payment platform. Essentially what we do is we move money from A to B for our customers. Uh, so we're based in the UK, but we have offices in, in the US, France, Australia, and, and Germany. And we process transactions for around 70,000 customers at the moment. And we move around $20 billion a year. I guess in, in terms of the, the story and, and the, the, the speed of our scale up, so back in 2019, we had 342 employees. At the moment, we are actually, it's more than that now, it's just over 800. And potentially by the mid 2030s, we're going to be up to, uh, you know, potentially 10 times that. So we are rapidly scaling up company. And you might have seen in the news recently, uh, last few days we announced we've just become a tech unicorn, um, which is which is fantastic. So <laughs> I guess our, our, um, yeah, our, our mission is taking the pain out of getting paid for our customers, which is really important for their economic sustainability. Uh, you know, if they have cash flow, then they can actually concentrate on what they're doing. But then it's also really important that we consider environmental and social sustainability in the same context. So as part of that, we became Tech Zero co-founders uh, <coughs> in April or May last year, I think. So uh, just before I joined, uh, but previously to joining Go Cardless, I actually worked in, in the space sector. So I was looking at measuring emissions in rockets and satellites and things like that. So I've moved from almost completely physical stuff to almost completely digital uh, things, which has been a really exciting experience so far. But I think the really key thing for us was straight away splitting our sustainability focus into two really clear, distinct pillars. And it's kind of similar to what has been mentioned already, the idea of reducing our own impact as a business. So looking at you know, our, our impact on climate, so our emissions, other areas as well, um, but specifically looking at that straight away. But then in the longer term, how can we create positive change through what we're doing? So how can we work with our customers to help them become more sustainable? Or how can we use our platform to create positive change on biodiversity or communities or, or that sort of thing? So a really clear you know, two pillar approach straight away. We set out measuring our own emissions, which uh, is similar to James. We, we used our, our own in-house calculators to measure our emissions across scope one, two and three. Uh, and and I'll, I'll get on to the sort of next steps on that. But I thought really importantly, so for us at Go Cardless, our main, um, yeah, one of our main ethos is starting with why. And I know we've already spoke about the why from the, the business context, but I think you know, from on the, on the global context, I think is also really important. It, the definition of sustainability or to be sustainable is to continue to exist. And obviously whether you're a business or you're just a person, that's really quite an important aim. I think so. Um, but I think you know, in the context globally at the moment, humanity consumes 1.75 Earths to provide our natural resources and also absorb our waste, which includes our greenhouse gas emissions, which is clearly not sustainable. We don't have 1.75. We've got one Earth where we, we all live and we're all interconnected as humans, as societies and as economies, and we're all dependent upon the natural world around us. So in that global context, it's really important that we we reduce our impact and create positive change. But then also on that, you know, the, the business side of things, you know, I know we've mentioned about the investment, you know, I think we, one of our new investors was actually BlackRock, who specifically look into ESG sustainability criteria uh, when they're investing. I think the talent side of things is massively important. You know, our, our, our employee base is really engaged with what we're doing on sustainability. So not just climate, but also areas like diversity and inclusion and well-being and things like that. Um, but I think also on the customer side of things, we're increasingly seeing, like, like James mentioned, a lot of our customers asking us what we're doing on sustainability, but also we're getting approached by companies who are coming directly to us now because of what we're doing on sustainability. And that's really even before we start shouting about it uh, yeah, through marketing and things like that. <clears throat> I think also from on the personal level, I think yeah, if you care about your, your customers or your employees or, your, or even you know, your shareholders or your investors, or as a, as, a, as a human, if you care about your neighbors and your family, your friends, if you, if you don't take action on climate, then you're essentially, you're not contributing to well-being. you're contributing to harm. So I think that's the, the really clear way that I like to think about it a lot of the time. So essentially that's the, the why, both the global context and the business context. 
But I think also really importantly for us as a scale up, what we've started to look at is what happens if we don't take action? So yes, we've got the, the point that you know, we, we are going to look outside of ourselves to try and create positive change. You know, even you know, by the nature of people, you know, our, our name is Go Cardless, right? So if you, if you use us over a direct debit or credit cards, you know, they produce something like 522 million tons of CO2 each year. But it's also really important that we reduce our own emissions. So th this chart just demonstrates what our emissions over time with our increased headcount would be. And essentially by 2035, we'll be at 1 million tons uh, you know, of cumulative emissions, which is roughly the same as what a small country puts out in one year. So even though at the moment we're a small, you know, relatively small business, it's really important that as we grow, we're decoupling our emissions from our growth. So that's j just for some context of the why uh, on, on our level. So, so what we're going to do to get there. So similarly to what James and Sally mentioned, we're, we're aligning ourselves with the science-based targets. And what we're mapping at the moment and what we're, we're, we're planning for is essentially a short-term target of 2027. So over the next five years, really, really focusing on decarbonizing wherever we can in those areas that we can take action. Obviously, certain things we can't yet because we have to wait for the wider economy to get there. Um, but then looking at a long term target of 2035. And we're still working through the numbers. Obviously, the science based target standard only really came out not too long ago. Um, but I guess the key thing on this is for us is the 2027, what we're going to do in that short term, because then if we if we decarbonize now, as we scale up, then that helps us in, in the longer term. And the specific areas that we're looking at this, when I try and communicate this with my, my colleagues and we start talking about scope one, scope two, scope three, a lot of time I see them glaze over completely. Uh, so so we, we've kind of split this into key pillars or buckets, as you can see here, which essentially collaborating with our supply chain, our employees and our customers. That's a really easy way that we, we see this working. And our, for our, our side, it's really important that these three groups are themselves sustainable because if we don't have a sustainable supply chain, we won't be able to create our product. If we don't have sustainable employees, we won't have anyone creating the product. And obviously if we don't have sustainable customers. If our customers don't exist in 10 years time, we won't have any revenue. So it's really important that we collaborate across those pillars to help everyone transition to a net zero sustainable economy. But specifically that means on our supply chain, looking at our purchase goods and services. So every company that we work with on our supply chain has an impact whether positively or negatively on our own emissions. But it's also making sure that we're not making demands on some of those companies. You know, I think in the UK, 90% of SMEs don't measure their emissions at the moment. So it would be really, it would just be really mean for us to say, hey guys, we're not going to use you if you're not doing anything. So that's why I think, James, you mentioned the idea of making sustainability open source. And I love the phrase democratizing sustainability. So basically giving tools and resources and helping people, which is what Tech Zero is is about, really. Um, but really importantly for us as well is working with our employees, both on internal engagement. So we've run workshops, we've got volunteer groups, but also looking at the impact of travel, whether that's commuting to work or, or travel between offices, uh, homeworking, because in, in the UK, most people have got gas boilers, which is massively impactful on, on our homeworking. So looking at how can we help our employees decarbonize their homeworking, um, and also on the customer side, because how our customers use our product has an impact on, on our own emissions because they have to use energy to access our services. There's other areas outside of that, you know, you know, the scope one type thing, you know, energy in offices, waste, investments, HVAC in offices, that sort of thing. But for us, that's quite small now. 99.8% of our emissions are what are, are, are sit within the scope three. And I think looping back to the point earlier about the emissions that sit outside of your, you know, the idea of scope four. So yes, we, I guess by people not using plastic credit cards, for example, we could say that we can communicate that we're helping to save those 522 million tons. But also on the flip side, we're currently, we're facilitating people's purchases. So if, if we look at you know, our 70,000 customers, what they're selling, the potential emissions from that at the moment could be far greater than that 522 million tons. So it's communicating that both in the positive sense and the negative sense, and then working across all those groups to try and bring about positive change. And just the last thing, because uh, uh, Sophia knows that I bang on about this all the time, but it's really important for us that it's not just all about carbon. We have to make sure that we're considering biodiversity, the natural world and communities in our in our transition to sustainability because we are all interlinked. And, and ordinarily I have a video with elephants and dinosaurs and stuff, but I'm just conscious of time. 
um, that I want to get on to, uh, yeah, we can get on to some questions. So um, that's that's all from my, my slides. I will uh, hand back to Sophia. Thanks, Ben. Uh, did you have one tip for those who might be considering embarking on UN Race to Zero journey? I would say just go for it, get started. Uh, that first step is probably the most important one and, and sign up to Tech Zero or, or a, an equivalent group because I think the collaboration part is so key. No one business, no one person, no one country can get to net zero or a sustainable economy by themselves. It's all about collaboration. Um, and yeah, and as, as James uh, yeah, mentioned, you know, as Tech Zero, but always constantly, I can see actually my WhatsApp chat going off and, on my phone with people asking questions about supply chains this morning. So um, collaborate and get started, which I know is kind of two things, but. Yeah. <laughs> uh, thank you. Um, okay, I'm, I'm conscious of time, but Hadar, do we have time for questions? Um, yeah, if anyone here has something to ask one of our guests, this is the time. So I'll ask something quickly. Um, did you see any impact on the investors of yours uh, when you declared or spoke about joining Race to Zero or Tech Zero? Was this uh, significant for your investors in any way or only for service investors? I mean, that would be interesting as a motivation maybe for why joining this initiative. I mean, from, from my point of view, MSQ is backed by LDC. so. Uh, we're owned by Lloyd's Development Capital. That's the the, the private equity arm of, of Lloyd's. Um, and I can only say they have been just hugely supportive of, of the environmental work. We're also going through the B Corp process, if you've come across that, which is a, a, a qualification across sustainability more broadly. You know, tech businesses are usually people, we're all people businesses, right? We have to get the best talent. And, and there's so much data out there. It was mentioned at the start, you know, about these correlations between businesses investing in sustainability more broadly and those that are, are, are growing fast. So I'm, I'm perhaps cynical about their reasons for being positive about it, um, but they, they see us doing this as a, as a key part of, of, of being a successful growing business and a big risk if, if we're not seen to be doing it, if we're cutting corners and saving money down the line, we're just going to struggle to hire talent and we're going to struggle to sell our products and services. So our investors were, you know, really really behind this i, I think from our, so we've obviously just recently raised an additional 312 million dollars i think if i remember the press release correctly um but i, I think there was certainly specific questions on esg that came in from both of uh, you know the the lead investors and the other investors as well um and i i guess you know, that's probably going to continue uh, but I, I know that our main investor is really engaged with um, our CFO, who's our exec lead on, on sustainability, and they've got you know, really good ideas and views, which really align with what we want to achieve in terms of us becoming and being able to say that we're a sustainable uh, tech business, because obviously we need to do a lot of work before then to be able to honestly say that we're, we're, we are a sustainable business. But I think there's, there's definitely that alignment between you know, our investors and then what we're doing, which, which is great to see. And I think that's probably only going to, only going to increase because I think you're know, in the wider context of things like you know, net zero transition risk and TCFD reporting and things like that and, and ESG, it's become such a growing trend that it's, it's only going to increase. Okay. Um, 